Missy Kitten here. So, today, I, I don't know if you guys watched my a bunch of random stuff videos. If you did, today is the day. My big project video thing I had planned is finally complete, and this is it. So, today I will be taking you on kind of kind of like a trip to the past. Alright? In a world where anyone different, anyone who looked different, I should say, was considered a freak. I'm going to teach you about those people. I'm going to tell you their stories. And I don't know if you'll like it like hearing them as much as I do, but this is more supposed to be kind of educational, I'll show you guys, you know, they may be odd looking, I should say, odd on the outside, but on the inside, they're amazing, All right? So let's get started. The first few were all in the 1932 movie Freaks. Let's start with my favorite, Schlitzy the Pinhead. Look familiar? That's because Schlitzy was who Pepper from American Horror Story was based on. It's unknown what his birth name was, but some think it is possibly Simon Metz. Schlitzy was born with microcephaly, a neurodevelopmental disorder that left him with a small brain and a small skull. This left him basically with the mind of a three-year-old. He wasn't able to speak fully or care for himself. Due to this, the owners of the sideshows would put him in a dress, as it was easier to change the diapers he had to wear, and they would call him by female pronouns. Most believed he could understand what was said to him, because he would react, and sometimes even mimic, rather fast. Those who knew Schlitzy described him as affectionate and sociable, he loved being the center of attention. When Schlitzy's legal guardian died, he was placed in the, under the care of a hospital. Being away from the circus and public eye caused Schlitzy to become depressed. Bill Unks, I think I said that right, found Schlitzy, noticed this, and returned him to the sideshow life. On September 24th, 1971, at 70 years old, Schlitzy died from bron bronchial pneumonia. The next on the list is Daisy and Violet Hilton, conjoined twins. They were joined by their hips and butt, they shared blood circulation and were fused at the pelvis, but they shared no major organs. Mary Hilton, the twins' mother's employer, I feel like I screwed up that, the twins' mother's employer, still feel like I'm screwing it up, <laughs> helped in childbirth and saw commercial prospect in the two and bought them. In the twins' autobiography, they stated that Mary, her husband, and her daughter kept twins in strict control with physical abuse. Daisy and Violet were trained in singing and dancing. When Mary died, the girls were given to her daughter, Edith Myers, and her husband, Meyer Myers. The twins were mostly held captive by the two, being beaten if they didn't listen to what the couple wanted. They were kept from the public view while they were being trained in jazz. Daisy played violin, and Violet played saxophone. In 1931, they sued their managers and gained their freedom from their contract. Now, this is one really sucky part of their story. Violet fell in love with the musician Maurice Lambert. They applied for marriage licenses in 21 different states, but were refused in all. Near the end of their lives, they began working at a grocery store. And here's the worst part of their story. On January 4th, 1969, after they didn't show up to work, their boss called the police. Daisy and Violet were found dead in their home. They had died from the Hong Kong flu. Reports showed that Daisy died first and Violet died between two and four days later. The only thing that would make it somewhat okay would really be if Day or Violet was, if she was too out of it from being sick that she didn't realize that 
her sister was just laying there dead with her. I'm sorry, I find that. Pictured here is Elizabeth Green. Elizabeth Green was the original Cuckoo the Bird Girl. She was also billed, no pun intended guys, as Elizabeth Green the Stork Woman. There was a genetic condition that caused her unusual appearance, but other than that, she had no known medical problem. She toured with the Ringling Brothers Circus. Her act consisted of her dancing around in a feathery suit with bird feet and a long feather on her head. Some say she was placed at the entrance of the circus because she was one of the less weird looking freaks. Quoting from a source, guys. And they hoped she would grab attention. In the movie Freaks, she was joined by Minnie Woosley, who received the billing of Cuckoo. After the movie, Elizabeth returned with the name Cuckoo the Bird Girl. You knew this was coming next, right? Minnie Woosley. Minnie was born with a rare congenital growth skeletal disorder called Virchow Seckel Syndrome. I think I said that right? I don't know. Don't quote me there. There isn't much known about her early life, but it is known that she was quote-unquote rescued from a mental asylum and was called Mini Haha. Due to her disorder, not only did she look like she did, but she also had mild intellectual disabilities. She was also bald, toothless, and either blind or very short-sighted. In her act, she would wear a Native American costume and speak gibberish. She appears in the movie Freaks as Cuckoo the Bird Girl and dances in a feathery costume. Thinking about it now, I probably should have placed these guys up with Schlitzy, but eh. Pip and Flip, or Jenny Lee and Elvira Snow. Both pinheads just like Schlitzy. Both are microcephalic, the defining characteristic of a pinhead. It was often billed that they were hailing from the Yucatan, please don't hate me if I said that wrong, but the girls were actually from Georgia. Their parents had loaned them to different shows in order to make money to support the family. It's unknown their birth dates, but it is believed that Jenny Lee is 12 years younger than Elvira. Generally, Jenny Lee died in her early 20s while Elvira made it to senior citizenry. Here we have Prince Randian, I think is how you say it, also known as the human caterpillar. He was born with Tetra Amelia syndrome, which leaves the affected without any limbs. Tetra Amelia syndrome is caused by mutation in the WNT3 gene, unless that's not how you say it at all and it's a fancier science name. I don't know. Anyway, though Prince Randian was born limbless, he did amazing things. During his act, he would wear a one piece gar wool garment which would give him the appearance of a caterpillar because it was so tight. He would move around by wiggling his hips and shoulders, and then he would roll and light a cigarette only with his lips. He could also paint and write. Sometimes he would even shave himself by securing a razor on a wood block. All his props were kept in a wood box that he reportedly crafted, painted, and attached a lock to on his own. He was married to Princess Sarah, and the two had four children together. Prince Randian died at the age of 60 on December 19, 1934, not long after his last performance at Sam Wagner's 14th Street Museum. Now there isn't much information on the next two, that I can find at least. Peter Robinson, The Human Skeleton, and Baby Bunny Smith. Peter was born April 8th. 1874. It was said that he had a normal childhood and a normal appearance until his early teenage years. Then his weight started dropping dramatically. He weighed 58 pounds and was 5 foot 3. Baby Bunny wasn't in Freaks, but since there's so little information on the two, I figured I'd put them together. Baby Bunny Smith started her sideshow career at the age of 13. In her prime, she tipped the scale at 689 pounds. The story of Baby Bunny Smith and Peter Robinson is truly a beautiful one. 
The two had worked together. Their act was a story of love. Soon, like their routine, Peter fell for Baby Bunny. She rejected him at first. He wooed her for eight years. And on the ninth year, Baby Bunny finally said yes. The couple had two children together. If you don't find their story beautiful, then I don't know what you would find beautiful. You know those awkward sibling hugs, kisses on the cheek, or even some awkward conversations? Well, try having to play husband and wife in a movie. Alright, I'll quit trying to be funny now. Here we have the doll family, their actual name being the Earls. Only two of the Earls is Warren Freaks, Daisy and Harry, the two that played husband and wife, but all four were in Wizard of, Wizard of Oz. Perhaps you can recognize Harry as one of the members of the Lollipop Guild? Anywho, the dolls were four of seven kids. The others were born uh, average sized. In 1926, all of the dolls were touring together. The siblings were all very close as they lived and worked together. Daisy married an average sized man in 1942. It ended in divorce a year yet later. When the circus the dolls worked for was sold, the Ringling Circus, they began touring with the Crescenti. Christen, I don't even know, Christenti, I don't know, I give up, I'm sorry, circus, in 1956. Two years later, they retired. They bought a house in Sarasta, I'm going to say that's how you say it, Florida, where they all lived until their deaths. Gracie died November 8, 1970, at the age of 71, followed by Daisy, who died March 15, 1980, at the age of 72. Then Harry on May 4th, 1985, at the age of 83. And then finally Tiny, who died September 6, 2004, at 90 years old. The rest of the people on this list were not in the movie Freaks. Next in our lineup, we have Joseph Merrick, aka the Elephant Man. Joseph was born August 5th, 1862. He was born with severe deformities that began forming in the first few years of his life. His skin was thick and lumpy, his feet became enlarged, a large bony lump grew on his forehead, one of his arms and both feet became enlarged, and at one point in his childhood he had, he had fell and hurt his hip and this caused a permanent limp. He had to sleep sitting up due to the weight of his head. It's unknown the exact cause of Joseph's deformities, but in this 20th century, the main theory was that he had suffered from neurofibromatosis type 1. In 1986, the new theory was that he had Proteus syndrome, I think that's what it is. In 2001, the theory had changed again, combining the past two theories. Joseph had contacted a showman in 1884 trying to get work. The showman agreed to exhibit I feel like that was the wrong word, but to exhibit exhibit Joseph. Eventually Joseph had met a surgeon named Frederick T Treves, Traves. He invited Joseph to be examined and photographed. After the shop that Joseph was exhibited at was sold, his manager sent him to Europe. He was robbed and abandoned by his road manager in Belgium. Joseph made his way back to London and lived in the hospital that Joseph Treves worked at. On April 11, 1890, in an attempt to feel normal, Joseph attempted to sleep lying down. At age 27, Joseph Merrick died due to a dislocated neck. Only three left now, including this one. Now we have Ella Harper, or the Camel Girl. She was born around 1870 and was born with genu recurvatum, I think that's how you pronounce it, which caused her knees to bend backwards. This caused her to walk on all fours and that's how she got the name Camel Girl. It is said that she had a twin brother who died very early. The back of her pitch card said, I am called the camel girl because my knees turn backward. 
I walk best on my hands and feet as you see me in the picture. I have traveled considerably in the show business for the past four years and now this is 1886 and I intend to quit the show business and go to school and fit myself for another occupation. This next bit of information is from the 1900 census. On June 26, 1905, Ella married a man named Robert L. Savely. They had a daughter together, but she died in November of the same year. In 1918, they adopted a baby who died at less than three months old. Ella died December 19, 1921, of colon cancer and was buried at her family's plot. Though it is unknown if the records are speaking of this Ella Harper. Josephine Myrtle Corbin more commonly referred to as just Myrtle Corbin. She was born May 12, 1868. As you can see by the picture, she was born with four legs. Not only did she have four legs, but she had two separate, separate pelvises. And they both worked, I should say. But all the... yeah. She was able to move the smaller legs, but they were, they were way too weak to walk on. Actually, only one of her legs was quote-unquote good because she had a clubbed foot. Myrtle started this sideshow life at the age of 13. She was so popular that many showmen were making fake four-legged attractions. This happened more when Myrtle retired. When Myrtle was 18, she married James Clinton Bicknell and they had four daughters and a son. Myrtle died in 1928. Finally, we have Julia Pastrana. Julia Pastrana was considered the world's ugliest woman. Born with hypertrichosis, Julia was, con was covered in hair, her ears and nose were abnormally large, and her teeth were irregular. Her teeth were like this due to gingival hyperplasia, Julia was sold to a man named Theodore Lent. Theodore taught her how to dance and play music, and he then took her on tour. In fear of losing her to someone wealthier than himself, Theodore married Julia. Now, Lent was not a good man. He only married her for the money she brought in. My husband loves me for myself, Julia would always say. He refused to let Julia leave their apartment during the day. He was afraid someone would see her and that would take away from the attention she would get at the sideshow. And he forced her to go through sensitive physical examinations. It was soon discovered that Julia was pregnant, and doctors feared there would be some difficulties during childbirth due to her stature and her narrow hips. But Julia feared something else. She feared that the child wouldn't be normal. She gave birth to a boy that inherited her condition. Three days later, the baby died. Five days later, Julia herself died of postpartum complications. Remember how I said Lint wasn't a good man? Yeah, his assholeness is really starting now. He sold the bodies to Moscow University. They were dissected and then mummified. Like, good mummification. Impressive, not like the mummy in the mummy movie. As in the Brendan Fraser mummy movie, not just a random mummy movie. <laughs> After the mummification, they were put on display. When Lent found out about the profit that was being made, he went through a bunch of legal stuff to get the corpses back. Sadly, he got them back and put them on display in England. He then rented the bodies to another show. Lent found a woman with a similar condition, a condition similar to Julia's, and married her. Eventually, Lent went psycho and was locked up in a sanitarium, thankfully. The corpses of Julia and her child were sent around the world, and in 1973 were put into storage. 
Well, in storage, the mummies were vandalized, the babies was badly damaged, and the owners just threw their remains into a ditch. The facility was broken into again, and Julia was stolen. While there's some info on, find, on the finding of her mummies, I've already said a lot, so I am going to just put an end to this. A happy end. As of 2013, Julia's body was finally... I know I said those that Julia was the last, but this is more of a tribute one. Rose Siggins and Ben Wolf from American Horror Story Freak Show. With, that's where most of you would know them. Rose Siggins was a caring mother to two kids. She, her condition, I don't remember what exactly it was. This is not scripted, this part at all. I don't remember what her condition was, but at the age of two, I believe, she had to get her legs amputated. So she got around by using a skateboard or walking on her hands. She died of an infection uh, sometime last year, I believe. And then Ben Wolf. He was a preschool teacher. The kids loved him. He died because he was jaywalking and he got hit by a car's side mirror and it just did a lot of damage to his head. He, um, I don't remember what kind exactly it was, but he had some form of dwarfism. And I just wanted to do this part to honor them. They will go down in history, just like all the ones I have presented to you today. So there we go. Some amazing, amazing sideshow freaks from bunch of different times really. Most of them were from the same general time zone, time zone, <laughs> time period, but some of them were a little different than others. I am going to leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please do not think this video was me trying to ridicule anyone. I absolutely adore these people. I look up to these people. This does not mean mocking anybody. I will scream that to the heavens as much as possible. I was not trying to mock anyone with this video. Okay? So, leave a like if you enjoyed. And leave, well, everything is down there. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys know some sideshow people, sideshow freaks that you know you think are inspiring drop them down in the comments let me know I might not know them and that would be really cool we get to know each other like that but I'm gonna leave this video here and I will see you guys next time